So if you haven't asked yourself already, why is this called the bubblegum TNC? It's because the first set of parts that I've printed, the, the first complete set of parts has uh, been printed in this uh, pink octave ABS filament, which uh, I think <laughs> reminds me of double bubble. So uh, I'm just gonna call it the bubblegum CNC for now, just cause it's, it's pretty easy to differentiate. Um, you know, it's kind of an uncommon name. So um, what you're looking at here is basically all of the printed parts and all of the um, I guess what you might call vitamins or the uh, basically uh, fasteners or, um, that you might need to complete it. Um, what's not listed here is basically steppers, controller, uh, and power supply because uh, you can kind of choose whatever you want for those. Um, this is set up for NEMA 17 though so um, you're kind of restricted in that sense. Uh, NEMA 17 is fine for this. Um, nice thing about that is the motors tend to be cheaper, they're lighter, um, we don't need this big enough of a power supply. Um, this whole kit's kind of geared around using the Gerbil Shield, so um, you know, kind of more lower power. Um, you can get away at a lower cost, and kind of the you know the main reason behind this is this sort of um, an open design that um, you know is fairly cost effective compared to you know a normal CNC. I think typically if you wanted to get it, you know, a good quality CNC, you might be looking at seventeen, eight hundred, eighteen hundred dollars for like a Tag. Um, you know, it's going to be a more capable mill, but um, I think this this little mill offers some advantages even. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over to some of the different parts. Um, basically, instead of using thrust washers, we're using uh, 626 uh, size bearings. I'm using uh, rubber sealed. Um, I guess the, the um, I kind of keep some of the detritus out. Plus the seal's more recessed. <clears throat> Than a metal shield, so um, we'll have less like binding issues. I mean, you could probably use either, but um, these are standard. Um, <clears throat> I believe they're four by. Yeah, so these are uh, these are four by five millimeter, twenty-five millimeter length um, shaft couplers. And um, I kind of alluded to in, in one of the earlier videos, uh, the diameter of the shaft on the lead screws is, uh, the non-threaded part is four and a half millimeters. So you essentially have to drill out this uh, four millimeter to four and a half millimeters. With three of those, this kind of leads you to the, to the next part of it. These are Dubro number 40 brass locking collars. I believe these are three sixteenths. Um, which is slightly undersized to 4.5 millimeters. So I drill these out to 4.5 millimeters also, and those are going to be our locking collars. Um, these are the, uh, <coughs> the bolts to uh, retain the stepper motors. These are M3 uh, by 10 millimeter and matching washers. These are Omron D2F 01FL. Uh, kind of micro switches. I'll be using these for uh, limit and homing switches. Um, one thing I've done is to make this, I have an Affinia uh, 3D printer which has pretty good support material um, so I don't actually need to break these out into parts like this but a lot of people, um, most people won't have a printer like that and so they'll be using like a rep rep style printer. Um, so this kit's designed to be printed without support material which is why they're broken up into pieces and you have these uh, number four sized um, self-tapping screws to basically um, attach these pieces together to make, uh, make a single unit. Um, and I'll show, show you how it goes together in a, in a later video. Um, so the way this is broken up is this is the Z-axis. Um, I don't know what's appropriate, which one's the X, which one's the Y. I always assume the um, the lower axis, the one that goes forward and away from you is X, and side to side is Y. Um, so I'm just going to use that nomenclature um, for now. So, um, or I'll just call it, uh, I'll call this, uh, I'll call the bottom one the lower. Uh, the way that STLs are labeled is there's lower plate and upper plate. Um, so Z axis, lower plate, upper plate. Um, and this is basically all the hardware you need. Uh, this is a uh, 10 millimeter 
lead, lead screw wrench. Um, so you pretty much only need this for assembly and disassembly. This is a uh, limit switch, um, basically mount. Um, this is the this is a bearing block. It's split into two pieces. They basically um, they'll be assembled together. But this is where the 626 will ride. Um, this is the mounting plate. This basically goes on top of the uh, on top of the z-axis, and then um, basically the stepper plate with arms. Um, the lower plate, stepper plate with arms, um, both sides of the plates. These are basically what I'm calling internal pieces. Uh, these are actually replace the dust shields. Um, this is a spacer to basically, uh, this is for the lead screw. Um, I'll explain what that's used for later. Uh, on the upper axis, you've got the stepper and extension. You've got both plates and you have the internal pieces as well. Um, you can see there's four holes here. Um, this is just for, for my usage. Um, the one that ends up getting released will just have two holes and I'll kind of explain why that, why that is later. Um, these are number four, three quarter inch, self-tapping, countersunk. Uh, these are half inch, number four, um, self-tapping, countersunk as well. Um, and these are probably one of the harder parts to find. These are M3 self-tapping button heads. Uh, this, I'm just using 20 millimeters. You can be a little bit flexible. Um, the ones that come with the Proxon, um, and these are basically hold the plates to the aluminum extrusions. Uh, the ones that come with the Proxon are a little too short, especially if we're, we're trying to beef this up. Um, so um, as I get into some of the assembly, I'll explain kind of why I, I've gone with this design and um, some of the problems that it's trying to address with um, you know, making making the MF70 a little more suitable for CNC work. Um, a lot of the kits that you can buy, actually there's not really that many MF70 conversion kits you can buy, especially in the US. It's kind of more of a European thing. Um, but a lot of them are basically aimed at, they'll just kind of attach on over the existing um, uh, handles, like wheel handles. You basically don't remove any of the, of the equipment. So um, kind of the goals of this is to um, make it a lot more rigid. Um, so you can basically remove most of the backlash. Uh, the Delrin nuts that are on the MF70 and KT70 um, actually have very little backlash, um, but they are kind of restricted in uh, how much you can tighten the lead screw. So uh, this whole kind of thing is basically designed around the fact that uh, you know we want to be able to tighten the lead screws a bit, um, plus reducing some of the some of the wear um, by using linear bearings. Um, the linear bearings are kind of a trade-off. Um, you could use the thrust bearings are kind of difficult to find in this size, um, and conical bearings don't really, I don't think they really exist in this size. Um, I will have some adapters um, if you want to use thrust thrust wash or thrust bearings instead. I did find some six millimeter ones on eBay, and they seem to be pretty nice. But um, these should be plenty strong enough to hold up to. Um, to basically the side loads to act as thrust washers as well. So um, yeah, so once we start assembling it, um, you'll learn a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I mean, stay tuned. Uh, one more piece I forgot to mention. Uh, these are in uh, three bolts. These are by 14 and these hold the uh, Z plate onto the, uh, the Z extrusion. Um, so these are the only ones, that, all the other M3 bolts are 10 millimeter, but these are 14. Um, the ones that come with the Proxon are a little too long, so uh, these are 14s and these are standard in three washers as well.